All right, so in this problem, I have 2 to the power of 10 plus 2 to the power of 10 is equal to 2 to the power of x. So I want to find the value of x here. So for my solution, I'm going to first start by rewriting my equation. So my equation is 2 to the power of 10 plus 2 to the power of 10 is equal to 2 to the power of x. Now, to solve this, what I'm going to do is first factor out 2 to the power of 10 to my left-hand side. So if I factor out 2 to the power of 10, I get 2 to the power of 10 times, well, 2 to the power of 10 divided by 2 to the power of 10 is 1, so I get 2 to the power of 10 times 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 to the power of x. Now from here, 1 plus 1 is equal to 2, so I get 2 to the power of 10 times 2 is equal to 2 to the power of x. And a simpler way of doing this is instead of just factoring this out, well, we have two 2 to the power of 10s here, and if anything added by itself is the same thing as that number times 2. So we could have just said 2 to the power of 10 times 2 at the beginning instead of factoring it out. So now from here, what I want to do is I can actually do this, solve this from here in two methods. So for method 1, I have 2 to the power of 10 times 2 is equal to 2 to the power of x. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite 2 as 2 to the power of 1. And now if I have something in the form a to the power of m times a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m plus n. So in this case, 2 to the power of 10 times 2 to the power of 1 is equal to 2 to the power of 10 plus 1 which is equal to 2 to the power of 11. So I get 2 to the power of 11 is equal to 2 to the power of x. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. So in this case, x is equal to 11. Now, method 2 of solving the problem from this step right here so I have 2 to the power of 10 times 2 is equal to 2 to the power of x. Now, instead of multiplying 2, I'm going to divide 2 on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I get 2 to the power of 10 is equal to 2 to the power of x over 2. Now, 2 is the same thing as 2 to the power of 1. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m over a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m minus n. So 2 to the power of x over 2 to the power of 1, that's going to equal 2 to the power of x minus 1. And now, again, if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. So in this case, 10 is equal to x minus 1, or I could write this as x minus 1 is equal to 10. And now if I add 1 on both sides, these two cancel out, and I get x is equal to 10 plus 1, which is 11. So as you can see, these are the two methods, and method 1 is actually much simpler. It only took a couple of steps compared to method 2. And now the final step that we have to do, and we always have to do this in every equation, is to check our answer. So our equation was 2 to the power of 10 plus 2 to the power of 10 is equal to 2 to the power of x. We got x equals 11, so I get 2 to the power of 10 plus 2 to the power of 10 is equal to 2 to the power of 11. 2 to the power of 10 plus 2 to the power of 10 is the same thing as 2 times 2 to the power of 10. And 2, 2 to the power of 1 times 2 to the power of 10 is the same thing as 2 to the power of 1 plus 10, which is equal to 2 to the power of 11. All right, so in this video, I'm going to solve the equation x to the power of 4 is equal to 1. So to solve this, I, want to I need to find the value of x. So I'm going to subtract 1 on both sides. So I get x to the power of 4 minus 1 is equal to 0. Now from here, I'm going to rewrite this as x to the power of 2 times 2 
minus 1 to the power of 2 is equal to 0. And the reason I did this is because now I can use the property a to the power of m times n is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So in this case, x to the power of 2 times 2 is equal to x to the power of 2 to the power of 2. So I have x to the power of 2 to the power of 2 minus 1 to the power of 2 is equal to 0. And now another property I can use is a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, a is x squared and b is 1. So I get x squared plus 1 times x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. Now this gives me two equations. I get x squared plus 1 is equal to 0 and x squared minus 1 equals 0. So let's first solve x squared minus 1 equals 0 because it's more simpler than x squared plus 1 equals 0. To solve this, I'm going to first add 1 on both sides. So I get x squared is equal to 1. And now I'm going to take the square root on both sides. The square root of x squared is x, and I get x equals positive or negative 1. Now for x squared plus 1 equals 0, I'm going to subtract 1 on both sides. So I get x squared is equal to negative 1. I'm going to again take the square root on both sides. But this time, I get x is equal to positive or negative square root of negative 1. Now, if you guys already know, the square root of negative 1 is equal to i. So I get x is equal to positive or negative i. So my four solutions to this problem are x equals 1, x equals negative 1, x equals positive i, and finally, x equals negative i. So please make sure to like the video, subscribe, and please also share this video to your friends if you liked it. Thank you.